Hey, thanks for joining us today on uh, Productive Agent Podcast, powered by Aubrey Home Loans. Our wonderful guest today is Terry Lunn. Terry Lunn is the founder and escrow officer of Ohana Title Agency, and I'll let her tell you how they got the name. But also, I mean, Terry's been in the industry over 20 years. Uh, she's also a licensed uh, continuing education instructor, of course, teaching title insurance, which is not a very, very good podcast topic, you know, and uh, I mean, some of them could be some of the horror stories might be good stories, but she's also teaches on social media and relationship building. So Terry, tell us about Ohana. Okay, so Rob, thanks for having me. First of all, I am honored to be a part of this awesome podcast. So thank you so much. And um, we came up with the name Ohana, a number one, it's our love of Maui and Ohana means family. So it is, you know, Hawaiian. And if you've ever seen the movie Lilo and Stitch, Ohana means family and family means nobody gets left behind or forgotten. So that's our big motto. And dealing with real estate in, you know, specifically a real estate residential transaction, it's it's where you, your home is where you put your family. And it's important to us. And we want it to be a time of celebration and joy and also to ensure that those, you know, new buyers in their family are secure in their home, that it truly just belongs to them. And there's no skeletons in the closet talking about some horror stories that could be fun. And, you know, any skeletons in the closet that could come forward right. and make it to where they couldn't sell the property, God forbid. So, but that's what we do. We like to make it be this amazing experience and everybody gets excited about it. I, and I really like that idea of the name because uh, we forget sometimes in the business, you know, a lot of times it's what, you know, paperwork and inventory. Right. But on the other end, you know, and I teach this to agents all the time. It's like, you know, like I have a family right now, they're selling one and buying another one. I'm doing the loan for them on the purchase. And, you know, between the two properties, it's well over a million dollars worth of business. But people, sometimes they live in like uh you know, an $8,000 a month, $9,000 a month world. And now they're thrusted into uh, over a million dollars in business. They're packing their crap and moving, right? They're, you got Maslow's hierarchy of needs of shelter is being disrupted. You know, I mean, and we're doing it all day and they're doing it on their break and lunchtime. And so, you know, and it's like, the, I give them latitude when they wig out. You know, for that very reason. Oh, my gosh. I mean, this is the biggest transaction that any human will likely do in their life. And any normal average human buying a home, selling a home are two of the biggest transactions that they'll ever complete. And they need to. And it's not a cell phone. OK, this is a big deal. Right. And it needs to be treated that way. And it needs to be. And you need to give your sellers and your buyers some grace when they're like, okay, so what's next? What's next? What's next? Because we do it all day long, like right. you said, and we lose track of the, oh, wait, this is just a human who's doing this and they just need a little extra love, a little bit of extra guidance. And so we can give that to them just to make them feel a little bit more secure in the process. And when they get to closing, which is where we get to have all the fun with it, is it should be a celebration, no matter what. I mean, when I love it when we're doing the buy and the sell. Oops, so sorry about that. When we're doing the buy and the sell on something, um, it is so awesome because I sit down with them and I'm like, hey, I said, so we're going to buy and sell a house today. What do you want to do first? Do you want to sell your house? And then do you want to buy a house or what do you want to do? They're like, oh, let's do the sell first, you know? <laughs> so it's always, um, it's just a fun process to go through with them. And I'm grateful that, you know, we get to do it here and I get to do it in my own space. That's right? what makes it better. So, yeah, you got to lighten the mood a little bit because they walk in, you know, especially at the end, you know, when they, you know, they've been to the mortgage company, they've been to the real estate company, you know, and then, you know, here at the very end, here you are bringing them in your office. You're like, who are you and why are we here? You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so. But what I wanted to talk about today was, um, you know, your uh, social media classes and your uh, and uh, relationship building classes. So which one do you want to do first? <laughs> right. Let's, uh, Let's talk 
let's talk about relationships because that automatically kind of flows right into the social media sector. Sure. Um, because relationships, I mean, they're the lifeblood of our industry. Right. People love to work with those who they know, like, and trust right yep. out of the game. And if you can add value to them, it's like you've hit a super special human right there because you're, you've just created such a solid rapport with them. And they, and they do, people want to work with you because they do, they know you, they like you and they trust you and they want to work with you. And to be able to do that is something that a computer is never going to be able to do for no. you. So no. all of our friends are, you be replaced, I promise. You're not going to be replaced by a computer. Not at all. You are totally fine. You're not going to be, as long as you're out there doing the things every day, that's a big part of it too. Yeah. On that topic of the, you know, replaced by a computer, like now the big brouhaha is uh, AI, you know, artificial intelligence. And now it may replace some folks, you know, that are doing kind of like research type things. Uh, however, I mean, we've seen a lot of things, you know, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see where that leads, but you know, there's always been, especially in our industry, the new, the new way of doing it, right? How many, how many times have you seen the new way come along, you know, and they come in with this great technology and what happens usually in a few years, they're out of business, but the technology was absorbed by the community, the real estate community at large. And they're just using, and that's like, that's a great technology, but it wasn't replacing us. Now guys like us that actually do it can use this technology to do more. And I mean, I've seen that happen multiple times. I mean, I'm not going to pick on any companies, but, um, you know, they're literally out of business, but their software remained. <laughs> it's very true. I mean, I think the whole AI GPT chat thing is awesome. We actually have a class coming up that we're doing at a brokerage office um, specifically for that, because just to help um, the agents actually write the listing description, because the remarks, I know that could be such a pain for most of them to do that that is hands down one of the coolest things that you could do so i'm going to learn a little bit more about that and and just be able to bring more value to our fun you know realtor partners with the ai and the chat gpt because there is always one new cool thing right i mean my gosh when showing time came out you guys were like oh, and the heavens have opened but then i know a lot of agents that are like you can call me to schedule <laughs> <laughs> they, you, know, you have a choice, right? You can e either choose to enable it or not enable it. But well, you know who bought showing time, right? Yeah. That's why we, our MLS. So we, we actually have a thing called MLS aligned. So it was head, uh, our, our CEO of our MLS, utahrealestate.com mm -hmm. is the CEO or president or whatever of MLS aligned. MLS is aligned. It's like six MLSs got together, pulled their resources and they're building, you know, and it's already been launched. I forget what they're calling it. Um, their own showing software. But there's right. a, they bought a, a contact management software that they're going to start incorporating. And, and the idea is we never want to be in a position again where we're using this great tool. And then somebody, you know, one of the big giant behemoths that are funded by, you know, Wall Street, who's trying to break the back of the NAR. That's another podcast for another day right. but uh you know we're never beholden to them so anyway so but let's get back to the relationship stuff <laughs> it's all part of the relationships we're aligning right at least the MLS right. is aligning that's a great word right because you know creating the relationships within the especially in real estate and just in general it's a big deal, no matter what. I mean, you want to go back to the same, honestly, the same person at Nordstrom that's going to sell you your shoes. You want to go find that one that took great care of you because you want to work with them again. You want to go find that person that walked you through every step of the way when you're this new young couple and you're scared to death. Right. Buying a house and you don't know what is what. And you're like, what does any of this mean? And you've had somebody there every step of the way helping and guiding and teaching you're you are literally you're glued to them and you're like you're my person and I want to continue to come back to you but 
there is always the new shiny toys that come about, right? That's why it's so important Absolutely. to solidify that relationship by staying in touch, you know, being in contact. And it's just little things. It's You don't have to drop stats on their door every month. God, please don't actually, because that's awful. Um, but you do need to just reach out and say, hey, how's it going? You've been in your house for a couple of months now. Do you have any pain points? Anything I can help you with? How's the sprinkler system going? Everybody's turning on their sprinklers. Oh my gosh, did your sprinklers freeze? I mean, there's always a reason for you to reach out to your SOI and just continue to keep that relationship solid. And I think right. that's where people mistake social media is, a, oh my God, it's a horrible thing to, oh, this could be the biggest tool in my tool belt. And as long as you understand, you know, kind of how it works, it really can be. And that's how you have to look at creating those good, solid, healthy relationships with your clients. Because at the end of the day, I took a class um, from, I was at, at NAR one year, was in, when we were in Boston. And I want to say his name was um, Greg Glogson. I think it's Glogson. He's Tennessee CEO in Tennessee. But he taught a class. And it was dealing with difficult um, buyers, sellers, and realtors. So all three. And it said, here's the deal, guys. When you're really working with somebody and you find you're just not clicking and you're not aligned, that's when everybody gets a bad rap for the real estate market. Right. Because our expectations were not set and you clearly just aren't meant to work together. The best thing you could ever do is refer that person out you know, collect a referral fee and be on your way because at the end of the day, you're giving that buyer or seller the best experience you could by saying, you know what, guys, I think I've got somebody that's going to work so much better with you. I feel some tension and I just want to make sure you get the best possible experience that you can get. I'm going to bring, you know, my sales partner, who or whoever that is in on this transaction and let them finish it from here for you. I think you're going to be a lot happier with them. <clears throat> and by just admitting that, and knowing that they've got somebody in their corner now that aligns with them, it makes the transaction so much easier. And they're not mad at anybody right? because people that they're being taken care of the way they need to be taken care of. I don't mind getting <clears throat> handed off in that situation when they're like, wow, you're a lot. I'm just going to bring somebody else in on this because you've got way too much going on. You know, and we all can be too much of something for anybody. And that's well, okay. I, I like the way you, I like the way you say, because your version is, you know, we're not aligned. Mine is like, you're really a pain in a butt to deal with. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, no, nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, um, you know, but really that's kind of what it boils down to. <laughs> you know? It really does. Right. But it is, it's that whole, um, it's that, you know, we're going to grind and hustle versus no, are we aligned with what we're really trying to, you know, to get across the finish line here together, but are, are we aligned with that? So, right. I've That's always said that when I teach agents, I'm like, I, you know, I always have rules. Rule number one, you have to be nice, right? For clients that I'm going to work with. Rule number two, you have to be motivated. You know, rule number three is, you know, we're going to work my system. I, you know, I'm the one that knows what we're doing. I'm not going to go behind you with a broom cleaning up. You know, let me lead the charge. And then, you know, rather than go behind you and, and clean up the mess. Because when they're in charge, I mean, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, your uncle's brother's cousin built a house once 30 years ago. So you know what you're doing, right? <laughs> you know, it's, yep, you know how exactly. that goes. So. Well, and it, it is all about leading, right, too. That is the other part. And as any good leader, you know, you bring in the right people around you to make sure that your people are taking care of all of your clients, all of your, you know. Yeah. I like to think of them. They're just all of our little extended families because. You know, six degrees of separation is a real thing, right? Oh, There's yeah. always somebody up here that on one of these fingers has a connection to somebody that's going to come back to you. Right. Salt Lake is small. So, you know, Salt Lake County is small. Um, Utah is even smaller. And we all kind of come back together. And when we start reaching out across state lines, even with social media, it gets even smaller. Right. And people... People pay attention. You may not think that people are paying attention to your social media. We are all stalkers and we all pay attention, guaranteed. Right. All the time. Yeah, no, we're, yeah, I mean, I tell people, I was stalking, I mean, checking you out on Facebook, <laughs> you know, you know, it's like, it's we're stalking. Come on, we all know it's a stalk. 
It, well, it is. And every buyer consultation that you go on, every listing appointment that you go on, how, every loan app that you're going to take before they give you information, they're going to Google you to make sure you're a real human. Right. I happen even with Ohana. We opened, you know, in January and I had somebody say, oh, okay. And they knew I was going to be calling. They knew the agent I was working with, but oh, I still Googled you and checked your website um, to make sure that you were really real before I gave you any information. Right. And that that's just is. That's how it is to, in today's day and age. So the more information and the more of a presence we can have in social media land, you know, in cyber world, in a way it gives people a level of comfort because if they can't find anything, they get that, what are you hiding? Why aren't you on so Right. And I people that don't like it. I have very good friends. They're like, I do it because I have to, but right. they love it at all. And you're never going to see super personal posts from them. You just won't. And that's right. okay too. But at least. Yeah. I don't do a lot of super personal stuff. You know, you know I do some. You, choose. you get to choose what you want to share. Right. That's the beauty. And it's not that you're hiding anything. It's just that you get to choose. I'm, I'm pretty private. Yeah. I'm believe it or not, I share a lot, but I don't share a lot at the same time. And right. It's okay because I choose to share um what lights me up too. I'm I'm not going to ever be one on social media. And these are kind of the rules I've lived by, just kind of moving into the social media part, right? That's created my foundation. For people that follow me on social media, you know a few things about me. You know, I like coffee, you know, I love shoes. You know, I'm in the real estate world and, you know, I like wine and that I love my people know I'm from Philly. <laughs> yeah. My dogs, you know, I mean, like you, you have an idea about who I am just right. from that. They, you know, fairly consistent. But my big thing is, is if you have to think about it twice, don't post it because it's just, it's just going to create a mess somewhere down the line and everything, <laughs> not everybody's going to like, and that's okay. Right. Any, everything I do post, I've always kept it more positive or it's been something that I've really needed to hear that day, especially when it comes down to quotes or anything like that. Um, right. I try to keep all mine on a positive level, you know? Yep. Well, it, n you get enough negative everywhere else. Nobody uh -huh. needs, you know, Yeah, I don't need to go out and create my own. No, exactly. And that's just me though. My whole my whole little energy bubble is more sunshine and rainbows and unicorns than, it, you know, than it is clouds <laughs> and storms and chaos. That's well, people, people, people ask me, they say, oh, yeah, it was breaking up. So, but people ask me and I'll say, how are you doing? And I said, well, I choose to be awesome. How do you choose? <laughs> oh, I love that. And so that does two things. One, it's an affirmation for me, mm -hmm. but two, um, if you tell somebody I choose to be awesome, how do you choose? You just stop them dead in their tracks from telling all their problems. Yep. How do I choose to be today? I love that. Well, and if you think about it, we, we only control two things. What we let in our mind yep. and how do we feel about it? It's true. Yep. Like I we don't can. watch news or anything like that. I mean, you know, I skipped a name. I mean, I, I, I just literally like unfriended all these like negative people. I mean, I'm just like, I don't want them in my life. And you don't need to. That's the no. be that's beautiful thing about, you know, social is it doesn't need to, you don't have to have these like, well, I guess I should probably, no, you don't have to. And right. it's that belief system that everybody's trying to disengage of, well, I should do these things because everybody else thinks I should type no. thing, right? When that's, <laughs> When that's definitely not the case, especially anymore, because people are waking up. It's been so fun to see. Um, because people were always engaged in social before, but then when the pandemic hit, I mean, you know this, and that's all you had was right. social media. Um, the levels of use just came through the, I mean, they literally came through the roof. And I was like, oh my gosh, now more than ever was an important time to be present and to stay connected with your people because that was the only way we really could for a minute. Yep. And so yeah. it gave way to all these great things like doing this on Zoom, right? We right. 
but everybody always opted for live because they're like, well, now all of the meetings just down the road, we'll get in the car and drive. Now it's like, oh, please give me a Zoom meeting. I'm in. I don't have to leave my office. Right. I, I need to do and still stay productive. Um, and there's still time and place, though, for face-to-face -face interaction because that's where all of the real magic happens. But it really can, is. You can create that solid foundation on social. You can create a good presence on social. You can create so much out there that when you do meet somebody in real life human form, they're like, Oh, you are just like you are on social media. But if you're faking it, they'll know that too. They'll know that. Right. Yeah. What's uh, so back to like, you get to choose and all that. So there's an old expression that says you love your family. You choose your friends. <laughs> oh, very true. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm after mute. So, yeah, you okay? Terry's taking a drink of water, coughing. <laughs> yeah, I had a, I've had a little bit of a cough and a cold, and every now and then it just sneaks up on me. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, talking about relationship, it, the social media is interwoven in that. So, <laughs> what would you say some of the biggest mistakes people make on social media? And um, the biggest mistakes people I think can make on social media, especially is keeping their professional life very professional and um, <clears throat> it's stats and this and that, and there's nothing ever human. No social. You have to be human, a human business. Um, stats are important. Um, inventory is important. All of the work we do is important. People love to see you win for the, right. for the people we love cheering you on and seeing you win so being able to share you know all of the parts of your business on social is a huge deal but don't just share business it's got to be personal too it's got to be some wins it's got to be you know you don't have to sh share your losses don't share your losses however you want to show up for yourself that <clears throat> totally up to you but you've got to be able to interweave the two because again this is a human business right it makes human connection really real. And <clears throat> one way to get unfollowed or unfriended really quick is to do nothing but post stats. Right. Nobody likes it. Well, Nobody I tell people, I said, look, it's, it's social media. Don't forget the social part. You have to. It's social media for a reason. And social right. media, is an, it's a contact sport too. It truly is. Like the social game and it's always changing. That's the other part, right? Like it is changing and evolving all of the time. Like now we talked about earlier with the, you know, the AI chat GPT thing. Like that's one new mind blowing thing. I'm so grateful for my awesome young ones that I have here with Kennedy and Isabel. Isabel is, she does all of our social media at Ohana. And so she's constantly versing on all of these things. She's like, oh no, let's do this. Let's do this. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Okay. I don't know what you Great. Do. You're in charge. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's great. But you just do the thing because I don't know what you just said. And it's okay to me. Right. Um, you know, so that to me is um, you have to be willing to intertwine a little bit to show that you're a human on top of an incredible realtor or lender or title professional or home inspection, homework, whatever your real estate industry piece of the cog is, you know, the cog on the wheel is you need to be able to show your humanness right. because showing that humanness is what's going to attract people. And um, honestly, I had um, a client actually call me. It's been about a week ago. She called me. She's like, Hey, she's like, I saw you opened your own thing. And um, I'm actually looking for a new title company. And I followed you for years and years and years on social media. And I just absolutely want to work with you. I, you are just what I need in my life. Wow. I was, gotta love that. I am honored beyond words. I am so grateful. It still gives me chills thinking about it. Thank you so much. But that is the proof in the pudding right there. That how you show up socially matters right yeah the best way i heard it explained years and years ago was you know you know back to the stats thing or check out my listing all that is um 
the way it's explained is just think about if you if you're invited to a party and there's like four or five people standing there talking to each other and you just walk right up and go hey check out my listing you know and you're holding up a flyer you know and it's like you know what are you talking about you know we're we're talking about like the super bowl or whatever mm -hmm. you know and so there's you know and that's the social th part of it so yeah, yeah there's a lot to be said for that there's a ton to be said for it um but people for whatever reason ever since hgtv came about people love to look at real estate <laughs> they do to look at it so the more you can add for your listing and be able to link. I mean, of course, we know following all of our division of real estate rules and guidelines and your click back rules and all that stuff, making sure logos are there. But the more you can share about that stuff, the better. Right. The thing is, is you can share the heck out of so many different things now and it doesn't blow up in your feed. It stays in the story feature because you can share story and they're gone in 24 hours. What's your right. open house? want it to be gone in 24 hours anyways because it's only for two hours long but more people are going to watch your story because they're short and they stay engaged do you know what the average attention span of a human is these days oh, yeah. Uh, yeah it's like that of a gnat you know it's not that i think a gnat has a long well it's close anyways so right. a goldfish's attention span is four seconds the human attention span is three <laughs> that's amazing yeah, yeah, and they, they say, you know, it's like the same thing, like when we're showing houses, you know, as an agent, you know, or, you know, when I was an agent, you know, as soon as you pulled up to the house, that's like they already they saw themselves living in it. And from every step after that was justifying that first reaction. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's no different than when they're following you on social media for so long and all right. of a sudden them in person and you show up and your energy's off your aura is they you have finally taken the filter off and you look way different than you did with a filter all the time on right. and just all of these things right i mean we all love to use a filter don't get me wrong i love to use a filter from time to time especially if we're just having a situation but by you showing up true and authentic you online when they do come to meet you in person, they're like, oh my God, this is the same person. And it's an immediate relief of, oh, I'm with a trustworthy human. Right. Because you know, you know, when someone's a faker, the second you show up and you look at them, you're like, you are not the same. And I'm out because <clears throat> you are a faker. <laughs> yeah. you. It's a vibe. You know, you can feel the vibe. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and it comes through like this. And it comes through through your social. It comes through, you know, wherever you're at, your energy is going to announce you before you even announce yourself. Right. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, I try to be authentic on my stuff, you know, and oh. I have, you know, I have my personal profile where it's just where I do personal stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and I throw some business in there, not as much, you know, it's more personal. And then, but then I have business groups, that's yeah. all business, you know, and that's a different animal, obviously. Well, groups are a great way to connect with people, though. And that's the thing that people don't realize about social media is utilizing the group aspect of it. You connect with so many people that you have a lot in common with. <laughs> right. And it's going to be it's a referral heaven in there, too. As long as you're showing up authentically to the group and being willing to contribute and not just having that. Right. Not just take, take, take. Take you know, but actually contributing because this is the one thing I've loved about BNI over the years. Um, you know, I'm not in a BNI group anymore, but some of the theories from that come that BNI was originally founded on was the giver's gain philosophy. And right. it's true because the more you are constantly looking to help somebody else grow, you're bringing so much more growth into yourself. But if you're not looking on how you can help your neighbor grow, um, you're not looking for growth opportunities for you either. Right. Because not even realizing that, you know, one really does feed the other because it's feeding your soul. I mean, I know I feel great. Don't you feel great when you give somebody something that they've been looking for, the help that they, guidance that they've needed? I, li I live on serving. Yeah. I mean, that's I like, that's my blood. Mm -hmm. Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, I have loved 
I, I love being able to be of service in our real estate community. You know, I served for years in, you know, at my parish, right. It's gone forever. I helped with all of the youth sports on campus. When my son was growing up playing, I, I swear I should have had a cot at that school as much as I was there, right. but I loved it. I mean, a part of it. And the same thing when my girls were cheering and being, you know, cheer mom and just giving back to those organizations and being a part of it. And even now my service still, it's really nice now. Like with women's council, I finally just get to show up. <laughs> I right. know, I, you know, I'm not putting the events on anymore, but like Kennedy and Isabella are both serving on the board and it's beautiful and amazing. But to be able to just show up and give them support that way, it's a different way of showing up. It's not that hardcore in it, in the middle of the service side of it, but it's just showing up to support your people. That could be the biggest support you could give to somebody. It's just to show up. Yeah, exactly. I agree. I mean, I agree with that. I mean, I agree with the whole service concept. I mean, what I do is I have a Facebook group that I, you know, that I been uh, administrating for a decade, you know, and some days I just want to shoot people, but, you know, for the most part, I love it, you know, and I just actually just built something in there. I built two tools in there. One was, um, you know, an agent had asked, you know, is there a central location to look up CE classes, you know, and you register for it. And so yep. I built one, you know, obviously there's only a handful in there right now, but over time it'll grow. And I, my, my vision is it's, it's the go-to place when you're looking for a class, well, you know, because I- you know, everybody, everybody does their own, you know, each board has their own website, you know, each instructor sends out their gr- mm-hmm. list to their list. You know, now it's like, you know, everybody's list. Well, exactly. And what a great space because people are already so comfortable in your space and they trust <laughs> the information that's in there. So when there's one more plugin added for that, somebody has been wanting, they're going to trust that content in there and be like, Oh, I know I can go here because I can find the things easily that I want right here. So I see it grow. I'm excited to, you know, to be a part of it and plug all of our awesome classes in there. But that's just one more way that social is working for you. It doesn't just have to be about where am I going to find my next buyer? Where am I going to find my seller? Let's talk about connecting with our other realtor friends and our other lender friends and even like our title friends. I've got some great title friends out there that we don't work together at the same company, but I'm going to call them if I have any questions about anything. Oh yeah. Fine. Yeah. It's the same with real estate and lenders. Exactly. And you never know. And it could be, I've got this buyer and I, it's not for me. Do you want to, you do, you do much better with this type of human. Do you want to take this over? You know, it goes back to creating an experience for your buyer or seller. I'll tell you a quick story. Years and years ago, when I was at Keller Williams, um, broker comes to me and goes, Rob, I have this newer agent and she's got a buyer. He's a real son of a B, you know? And uh, he goes, so I was thinking of you. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, okay, was I insulted or complimented here, you know? So, <laughs> you know, and he was, the guy was, you know, he, he just, you know, he was just a, a strong will guy, you know, and I took over the file. And got everybody calmed down and just said, no, I'm in charge, you know, and right. we'll do whatever you want, but I'm running the show. So, yep. And, and so- when you let a pro run the show, when you let a pro run the show, it works out great. Exactly. Well, and it really that- does. And sometimes, you know, like we all have taken so many different personality tests to know, you know, what's your driver or, you know, what's your color or all of these things. And you, and we've taken these and we have, invested in ourselves to try to learn how to connect with people and also how to respond to them because right. 90% of how the conversation is going to go is how you respond to what they say in the first place. <laughs> are Excuse me. Mean, or are they just like direct and they're like, listen, right. Bella, point A, B, C, and D that's all. And then, you know, you're like, okay, we, there's a no fluff situation here. We need details only. And that's all we're going to do. Yeah. I remember being taught Matthew Ferry years ago. That was one of Mike Ferry's sons. Huh? You know, he, he, I remember he said one time, it's more important to know how they think than what they think. It's true. You know, 
He says, because if you know how they think, then you can present what they need to know in a format that's conducive to them. Oh, absolutely. A million percent. I thought that was brilliant, you know, just a brilliant thought. Mm -hmm. Because what we always tend to do is we present. We tend to present our preferred method. Well, that's great if you're talking to somebody else that chooses or, you know, that's their preferred method as well. But um, when you're not, you know, when you have a guy that's all details and or you have a guy that's all, you know, touchy feely. I mean, it's basically you got a blind guy talking to you. Got, what is it? How's that go? Was, I think it was the movie Young Frankenstein. We had uh, the blind guys yelling to the deaf guy. And the deaf guy <laughs> sign into the blind guy. <laughs> it's like and the right doesn't know the left doing exactly. You yeah, the, the blind. <laughs> Neither one could tell what the other one was doing. You know. Exactly. No, that's pretty that, funny. And that's true. I mean, and that's and that falls right into social too. So you know, my biggest advice I can give anybody is just to be your true, authentic self. To really you know, merge that line a little bit between personal and business right. and just bring your own authenticity into it because you're going to connect with people that you have some common interests with right. or that you really want to connect with. I mean, that's the best way, you know, that you can do it. And I listened to um, <clears throat> Alma Merrill. I was listening to one of his talks that he was giving. He's like, and you know, the biggest thing he's like, I learned early in my career that building rapport is also make, he's like, I always thought it was, Oh, walk into the appointment and find something the, the common common and talk about that. He's like, well, I did that on an appointment and found out this guy's a big Harley guy. I drive a, you know, I ride a Harley. We start talking, we get into the garage, we talk about Harleys, we do all these things. He's like, and we didn't talk about real estate one time and somebody else got the listing because I didn't build myself as a real estate agent first, Harley rider second. Right. It's like a very expensive lesson I learned, but it was a very good lesson. I'm like, huh, I liked that. And it's just kind of stuck with me. And it's no different on social media, right? Like, hey, don't forget guys. I mean, the worst is when your neighbor does this, sign goes up in the yard and you're like, what the crap? I was at your house two nights ago and you didn't tell me you were selling your house. Right. And they could been for that, right? Of you're too close. And there's a lot of people that are like that. I mean, there's some people who their family is in real estate and they don't want them to touch the transaction because they don't want any, that personal of a thing them to be a part of. But well, there's, I mean, as doing it as loan officers and real estate agents, you know, I mean, your side of the business, you don't get into involved into the nitty gritty of their lives the way we do. But there's, you know, when you work with somebody, you know, like financially, I mean, when I, I get in a file, I mean, I know more about their finances than probably, you know, 95% of the people they know. And I learned that all in two weeks, <laughs> you know. It's a vulnerable thing for them. I mean, when you're handing over that whole piece of you, you're like, oh, oh my gosh, okay well, this is weird and this is scary. And, you know, there's all of those things that just make it a little nerve wracking and it can be Oh yeah. But able to develop, you know, that rapport with them and also let them know that, Hey, you're here to help. This right. is exciting. And, and that's how it's set up because I mean, how often are you even taking loan applications in person anymore? <laughs> yeah. I try to take them over to phone. No, not in person. Yeah. I try to no. take them over to phone you know, take all my notes because I can right. either send them a link, you know, mm -hmm. but then they don't, you know, they always have questions. So it's a lot easier for me to kind of walk through it in a conversation and just take notes and then I'll go start it <clears throat> and then, excuse me, and then finish up whatever we're missing, you know? Exactly. But you've had a conversation with them oh, yeah. and created that connection. And that's a big <clears throat> deal because when people don't feel that connection, no matter what, whether it's just on social or anything, they're going to, they're going to check out. Right. They're going to check out with you. And that's why it's important that you do let people know. Yeah. Hey, guess what? I've got, I'm, you know, I've got baseball. I've got soccer. I've got cheer. I'm the mom, this, I'm the wife, this, or I'm the husband, this, I'm the uncle, I'm the brother, I, whatever this looks like, right. You are all of these things, but Hey, don't forget at the end of the day, 
I'm still here to help you with whatever you, those real estate needs look like. And let me tell you why I'm still, even though I'm all these things, you know me as all these things. Let me tell you why I'm really good at what I do. Right. And nothing wrong with that. People are utilizing LinkedIn more and more now. And that LinkedIn is a breeding ground where you get to talk about all of your great things that you do. That's right. where you should be posting every award you've received, every, everything, every listing, every buyer, every, all of your stuff, because LinkedIn is your resume. Yep. It is your <laughs> Yep. Me, you can throw into that profile, the further and further and further and further it will go. So if you're looking for something to keep it super business and you want to connect with more people that way, LinkedIn, you can never go wrong with it. It's a great space to Right. It's a it's, space where you can be business, strictly business. Yep. And have it be okay. I mean, there's been, <clears throat> I see a lot of people that are kind of merging it, but not really. It The personal stuff just doesn't take off like no. <clears throat> on LinkedIn. And there's a time and it's knowing your platform too, right? And there's a lot of people out there. And we talked a little bit about stories for ju just briefly, but stories are many. Stories is where your money is right now. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's Stories story. are where, in fact, I got a podcast. I didn't listen to it yet. It's the whole podcast is, you know, how to use stories in business. Yeah. And the stories are great and they're easy and they're fun and they right. go away. I mean, that was the whole thing about. Oh, you're, I'm, I t I'm talking about something different. I'm actually talking about actually telling a story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're talking about the stories on Facebook. Sorry. Yeah. I forgot the whole you know, the conversation with social <laughs> media. What was I, I thinking? Well, but because we're talking about social media, that's also where you tell your story, right? You share your story. You are nothing but a storyteller. Right. Um, Kelsey Pites is one of my favorites um, in social media influencers. So I love to follow. She's actually an NAR certified educator. She teaches at NAR all the time. She spoke at women's council. Who is this? Her name is Chelsea Pites. I don't know her. She's fantastic. I love her. And um, that she always says people get so freaked out because they go, well, what, what am I going to write about? Like, I'm boring. I don't have any content. And in reality, you're really not boring. And right. you really are content because people are nosy mm -hmm. and they want to know what's going on. So as long as you have yourself, you're never going to run out of content, which when you think about it, you're like, ah, okay, makes perfect sense. Um, so that's, but it is the storytelling in essence. That's what social media is. Share your story. I believe it was, um, the John Schmaby, he was the NAR president a few years back and he had, that was his whole theme for the year was share your story, share your why, right. why are you, why are you sharing your story? And that has just stuck with me, um, a lot. Because that's what social media allows you to do is share your story with so many more. And it's the cheapest CRM you will ever have in your entire life. Right. But yeah, there's a book out there. What's it called? Story Brand or something. I forget the author's name. Mm -hmm. I listened to the book, but I ran across the gal, uh, Ali Garbera, and she's mm -hmm. actually local here. And she's a certified instructor based on. Uh, the story brand book, you know, he actually teaches like deep classes on how to be a story brand person as a business to teach people. Let's tell your story. You know, he talks about it from, you know, in Hollywood, he used what was two movies he used game of Thrones and star Wars. He says, you know, and I don't know the game of Thrones, but I know the star Wars, you know, so who was the hero in star Wars, right? Luke Skywalker. Right. right? <laughs> and so, and he says, you want to be the guide, the guide. And who was the guide, right? Obi-Wan Kenobi. So the goal in the story business or story branding is your business model needs to make the consumer the hero of the story. And then you're just a guide. It's in the background. In other words, you know, they're trying to buy a home, you know, make, you know, you know, I'm going to come in and give them the loan. I mean, you know, people think, you know, the, you know, the brand out there is push button, get mortgage. I mean, you know, I know mm -hmm. one loan officer, he started branding push button, get real estate professional, I mean, mortgage professional. 
you know, push button, get mortgage professional, you know? And so, I mean, you just, you're not going to push a button and get a mortgage. I mean, it's just not that, I mean, it's, it's a nightmare. I mean, I call it the loan application oscopy, you know, I mean, I am crawling in you and dying, <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> I got to know more about your life than your closest family doesn't even know about you. Exactly. And then I tease them. I'm like, the blood sample is coming up next. Hold right. Please <laughs> yeah. If it was in person, I would have a cup on the table here. Go, fill it, you know? go exactly. pee in this, you know? Yep. It's, um, but it's true, you know, so social, social is important and social media is a big deal. And we're always, you know, hosting workshops, we're doing classes on it. So if there's anybody out there that even just wants us to kind of overlook at their social pages and see what they're doing. Sure. And if we can help, you know, point them in the right direction, we're always more than willing to do that too. Because that's again, a great offer. It's part of our service, right? We want to make sure you are in your nature. Yeah. We, we love to see people win and we want to see, you know, our client, we want to see all of our friends win, not right. even just, our, but I want to see all my realtor friends win. I don't, right. I don't ever like to hear of anybody doing poorly. So anything that we can do to help somebody win, that's what we're here to do. Well, so if somebody wanted to get a hold of you to do that, how would they do that? Um, they can they can just email me. They can shoot me a text message. You know, email and our website is www.ohanatitleutah. Utah's all spelled out. dot com. They can shoot me an email, and it's just my name, Terry. Two Hi. R's and I. Two and, R's, I.E. Yep ohanatitleutah.com or they can always reach out to us too. Um, my cell phone number is on the webpage and um, follow us on social. You can reach out on social, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and um, follow me personally, follow Ohana Title. We're always putting stuff out on our social pages. You know, we try to do just a lot of different things on there. So it's not all title insurance all the time, but it's more of a, hey, we're here to help you guys. Right. You know, along the way. And we're here to have some fun too. So, <clears throat> well, that's awesome. And that, you know, that's just back to your whole, you know, we talked about earlier about service. I mean, you just pay it forward. What did you call gain, giver's gain or something like that? <clears throat> what, Absolutely. Yeah. What was that book? I love that book, um, uh, Go Giver. Uh, you know? Yes. Yep. All three, there's three. <clears throat> The Go Giver books. There's like three different ones. I finished reading Go Giver Influencer was the last one I read, and it was awesome. So oh, I didn't realize all... there was multiple. Yep, there is. There's there's a couple different ones, and they're all were really, really, really good. They stuck with me pretty hardcore. So. I mean, it's the same guy. He's just giving you the principles from different camera angles, right? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I like that. Yep. Yeah, I've learned I've learned over the years that usually when they have multiple books. The second book is maybe 20% more, <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm like, oh man, this is leftover. It's, if it were a movie, this was the stuff that got left on the film room floor, <laughs> you know? Yeah. These oh, well. were, um, there were some different characters and they were going through some different tasks. So right. it was, and I want to say it was the second book and they go give her series where it was basically a gentleman who was looking to expand his dog food line, if you will, but he had a very specific way he wanted to do it. And he had a, basically like a big brand, if you will, wanting to pick it up and, but then distribute it to all of the stores and wanting to have him scale, but not willing, but they weren't really wanting to help him make that happen. But there was just the connection between the two individuals that, where they were like, no, we need to help you do this, but help you do it the right way. And so it was just getting in there and it talked a lot about communication and how she initially came off to him because that's how she perceived she was supposed to act versus what he really needed when he walked into the, when she walked into the room and that time. So it was pretty awesome. I liked it. <laughs> so, well, that's good. It's blue. I do remember it's blue. I don't remember the name. Well, the last I can just look up go giver i'll find it yep it was great well that's awesome so thanks for joining us today terry i mean this was i Absolutely. mean you know i've known you a long time i don't think we ever got to hung out hang out like this have we i don't, <laughs> I think, don't think so <laughs> but it's been a long time so yeah i think one time up at uar when you had dinner with a whole bunch of us i think that was the last time yeah, but that's not hanging out you know oh <laughs> yeah and that was what six or seven years ago right 
That was a long time ago. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. They take a lot of flack when they go to Hawaii, you know, their whole staff goes on our dime. <clears throat> you know, they're like, yeah, that doesn't sit well with me, you know? Uh, yeah. So, you know, that the whole staff good. goes with their family and everything on our dime. It's like, no, no, it doesn't <laughs> work that way. But anyway, well, thanks. So Terry, again, thanks so much. And uh, I want to thank the people out there for joining us. Um, this is Productive Agent Podcast, powered by Aubrey Home Loans. And uh, remember, if you need title work, you call Terry at Ohana. Terry at Ohana Title. So T E E R R I E at Ohana, O H A, right? O H A N A. Yeah, O H A N A. Right. O H N A A Title Utah spelled out dot com. And then, um, you know, her numbers there and all that, you know, and like, you know, 20 plus years in the business. So anyway, that's it. That's all I got. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. See you guys later.